was born in sin, raised in sin. Mm. I grew up in sin. When it comes to darkness, I I was I will refer to myself as a figure of darkness. Mm. But thank God for the saving grace of Christ, wow. who has called me out of deep darkness. When it comes to deep, I, I was I was I was once in deep darkness, deep deep darkness. But I find his light. He called me out of darkness and he brought me into his marvelous light. Wow. I I was born in a Muslim home. My dad is even an allergy before he passed away while I was in wow. prison. Wow. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, this is a Biodu's shop in Ikorodu. It's uh, quite. I mean, I'm so joyful to see the name they call is a boutique Christ ambassador isn't that amazing that's wonderful this is how you know a well repented um, prisoner uh, somebody who came out from prison and they has repented fully if, if, even my list that thing that he could not have done for me but he was able to raise me up you know I'm from, I'm from a very poor background the, the main thing is that if, if I if, if someone were to tell me that I'm going to do this it would I would I would nobody would believe but it was through him and your supporter, you know, even know that that you are sent. I'm, I'm so grateful to Abandoning Grace Foundation. I'm, I'm so grateful to the to the supporters. I'm so grateful to every one of you. They encouraged me, you know, you financed me, supported me in every aspect. I'm I'm so so grateful. I'm so so grateful. This is something that has never been done in our, in our family before, you know. I'm just like someone someone that is that is opening way out of the prison. Someone that, that came out of the prison and then this is someone doing it. Even my family that, that does not want to to, to get come with me before. They were not like this is this is but it's just wow. been even not for you because you know when you see someone coming back from prison, you know the society cast us away, mm -hmm. society pushes us aside. But thanks thanks be to God for, for daddy that God has sent to me. Thanks be to to mommy because even if not for mom also because she has been there as in, in every aspect praying for me and encouraging me also, if not for her also, you know. Uh, the, I saw and I'm so excited to God be the good glory. God bless everyone that's a blessing to our son and beauty. Daddy, God bless you for you be yourself. I am so, so impressed. I also want to give my only two seats to you because obviously there are still things that need to be done. Like daddy was just observing and showing me you need to build that little place. And I know that God will touch the hearts of men. I'm going to give you my little seat of 30,000. Wow. Just to wow. add up, wow. I'm also put this place. I was so wow. taught to see ambassador mm. of Christ. Christ. Mm. It is, it is so, it is so amazing wow. that you carry God. You carry God. God will carry you. Amen. God will carry you. Amen. And as you draw men and follow the mentorship yes. of our set man, our daddy here, yes. the Lord will announce Amen. you. Never look to the, back to Egypt. Yes, Never look to the right or to the left. Who he who began this good work? Amen. You will not leave it on Amen. The Lord is raising Amen. the commodity Amen. for Christ. Amen. Daddy, God bless Amen. you. Amen. God bless everyone that put their penny, that put their fight for them, that put everything to we have to restore and be all true. Ah, may God, Amen. who sits in heaven over the affairs of Amen. men, Amen. may He meet you at the point of your You will Amen. never Amen. be held back Amen. spiritually or physically. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mama, for the support. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you did this support. But we need to like buy something here. I don't know what we're gonna buy. This evening we are going to have another exciting moment. Um, reality has to set into our system again because so many of us don't understand what is going on in the world today. Um, I have a Biodu who was facing death sentence in um, Ikoi prison and. Um, Heavenly Father intervened in his life and I build him become a free man today. He's going to tell you the story by himself. I'm not going to talk for him. But before we start, let him just uh, give us one song. And then from there, we will do our opening prayer. Go ahead, sir. You're welcome. You've got times and seasons in your hands. Daddy, you caught forth light out of darkness. Lord, you don't need a man to be the God you are. But in your mercy, 
You've got me own Lord, you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I and my God present ourselves a living sacrifice. Lord, we have gone the same journey. We came out of the death trap. The enemy caged us in the prison where I would have died after eight years you showed me mercy. Where he would have died after six years you showed him mercy. Father, we are here today to tell the world that you are still God. You never change. And you are too faithful to fail your people. My God, everyone under the influence of our voice this moment, let them have this reviving moment. Amen, let amen. their spirit be quickened. Let amen. their spirit man be lit up. Amen, amen. Father, whatsoever that is holding them bound, amen. saying that they are not qualified to serve God, amen. look at empty vessels like us that God filled. Donkeys like us that God said that is in need of. Father, we are the donkeys. You say you are the master that is in need of the donkeys. Those that are out there feeling rejected, still feeling unqualified, tell them that this illiterate standing here today is the one that you call and he says it's your own. My God, fill them with that thing that they are thirst of. Amen. Everyone that are panting like deer pants for water yes. brook, let them be filled. Amen. As my brother share his testimony this moment, yes. let every ear that hears his testimony be quickened Amen. so that the name of our Father will be glorified. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you glorious Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Yes, adieu is here. Are you doing? Are you doing? Are you doing? This young man you see here, he was in Ikoi prison for um, six years. And um, I will tell you what, it's better that you hear from the horse's mouth. He will tell you what happened, why he entered the prison. And then we have been doing our crusade in Ikoi. We have been in Ikoi for the past seven years doing programs. And during the period he was in Ikoi prison, God used, you know, he is one of the worshippers, one of the singers in Nikoi. They have been doing well in the church there. And the message I've been ministering to them, he has been working in his life one day. One day, the mercy of God rested upon him. Mm -hmm. Just one day. I don't know whoever is listening to me or watching me now. Whatever that is your Kadesh Banya, whatever that is your wilderness experience, Whatever that is your low deeper, your David will meet your Mephibosheth today. Amen, amen. And when he meets your Mephibosheth today, do you know what? Your story will change. Amen. And the only thing that changes story is transformation. When you turn away from your wicked ways, that 180 degree turn around, that's the only thing that changes situation. Amen. When you turn and follow Jesus Christ, turn back at the enemies. Things will change. Amen. I am so glad that you are here. Yes, Amen. maybe we start at the wrong time. These people would like me to start like 9 p.m. so that Americans, British, other people can be able to join us. Unfortunately, he came from a very far away. Ikorodu, right? Ikorodu is very far away to come from there to the, to Ajasa, to the island. It's quite far. And I don't know if, if he's not going to make it today. I will definitely going to find him a place to sleep tonight. So then tomorrow he continue. But if God help us, we finish on time, then he might be able to find it. We're going to get a taxi that will drive him back home. Because if he take a bus, he's not going to make home on time. So please let us listen to him as he tell us his testimony. Please, first of all, introduce yourself to them. Tell them who you are. And then uh, you share a bit of your testimony with us, please. Hi. You lift your voice so that they can hear you because the microphone is not so good. My name is, I was born at Biodun Smahi Dayodun. For glory be to God, presently I'm at Biodun Ujel Ayodun. I thank God for the opportunity to be here. First of all, I, will, I will want to appreciate the Lord God Almighty for giving me the privilege to be here right now. I also thank my father who has given me the privilege to be on this platform and who has helped me, has supported me, and introduced me to Christ, has been a, a father indeed, leading us to Christ while in the prison. I was arrested in the year 2013. 
and this journey took me down to Ikoyi prison. I was arrested with some of my friends, which are, which are my, my group of, of boys in the school day. We were arrested at home, they degraded us and I was I was arrested along the way. Although what I was arrested for, as in I was not involved in the scene, but I was I was a cultist and I and I was one of the leaders then. So I give orders, I do a lot of things which are not supposed to be done. When it comes to anything seen, when it comes to anything reckless that I was involved. This led us to prison. They arrested us and we were taken to Ikoi prison. I was facing a case which is cultism. I was also facing Conspiracy to commit one murder, and I was also facing a murder charge, which might land me to death sentence. Which might land me to death sentence if I was found guilty of the offence. Mm. I've done a lot of grievous acts in the past, so I thought it was a normal thing that whatever it is, I'll come out of this. But I never knew it was. It was not going to be an easy journey. I was there. I was still engaging in my sins. Prison is a place where people get worst. People is a place where people, you know, if you, if you, you. You know, you get to the prison and then you, you see, you meet a lot of people and then you get influenced to do, the, to do bad things. But thank God for Christ. In the prison, I, I thought, ah, we had gangs in the prison. We had a lot of mixed up in the prison. I was still living my reckless life back then in the prison, believing that all what I was doing was the right thing. I had no conscience. My conscience was dead. Connections up and dead, here and dead. Everyone tried to, my family tried to bring me out, but all to no avail. I was caught up in prison and I was still living a reckless life in the prison. That's the normal lifestyle that I was living. Not until, you know, Abandoned Grace Foundation came and then they, 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 they preached about Christ to us. Then I was like, what, what reason do I have to go to church? What reason do I have to go to any place? I was like, at least let me just live my life. Mm. Whatever comes out of it, let me just live it. But thank God for the mercy that I got that day. I want the mercy. Mercy, I was like, mercy. What does it mean, mercy? After all I've done in my past, can, 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 can someone still forgive me? Can this God still forgive me? Mm. So I had to, I, I was like, okay, let me give this God a second chance. What well, this condition is, on giving this God a second chance, I'm giving him this, this chance on a, on, on a condition. If he can forgive me, but that forgiveness will be, in, in him forgiving me would be on one condition. Mm -hmm. And me accepting Christ, I'm, I had to give him a reason. I, I was giving him a, an option. I said, okay, if I have to accept this Christ too, I have been living in sin and I've tried all my possible, I tried all possible ways to, to get out of this sin, but it was not possible. Now, if he can save me from my reckless acts, every life of sin, because I was caught up in deep sin and in deep mess, if he can save me, then I'll give my life to him. It wasn't easy along the way, I, I, I accepted Christ. But I thank God for the word. I held on to the word of God. I, I, I held on to my evangelist encouragement. Because David was a man caught up in sin. But after David's sin, he would go back to God and ask God for mercy. So that was, the devil tried his best. Whenever I, whenever I do any, anything, the devil would tell me that you cannot. Mm. You're already in prison. Mm. You cannot. You cannot get, get yourself out of this life you are living. Just, just continue living the way you are. Because just continue. That's it's a normal lifestyle. Continue. You are in prison. If you're out of prison, you can you can you can you can change. But for you, for now that you're in prison, you can still be living your reckless life. I was in prison, but I was still living a life full of sin. I was committing so much grievous sins. But whenever I do this thing, I will I will go down on my knees. I will go down on my knees where where I uh am, -huh. and I ask God for forgiveness. I thank God for salvation, for complete salvation and restoration. I I gradually gradually I was I it was sacrificed. I got to know about something. If you really want to serve God, you have to sacrifice your flesh. You have to deny your flesh. You have to deny your flesh because there are some things that I that I that I usually find myself doing that I enjoy doing, but you I have, have to, to give, you have to give them up. I have to give it up. I have to lay it up. I have to lay everything down on the cross. Yes, sir. I nailed everything down and it wasn't easy, but I thank God for, for grace. I started sacrificing. I, I nailed everything down. And that was how I got to know Christ. I, I started I started up on the journey. You know, there was a day I was just I had a revelation. I was like, God showed himself to me that he wants me to be. He, he wants me to be teaching. I saw myself teaching people. I said, I mean, I didn't finish school, so how do <laughs> I, 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 become I, a teacher. I cannot become a teacher? <laughs> what is there that I can that I can teach people? How do I teach? What do, you know? what do I know that I that I'll be able to, mm. to impart to others? Mm. I saw myself teaching, but God said, the little you have, you start with it. Mm. Mm. God said, he wants me to be a shining light, even in the darkness. I said, a shining light, even in this darkness. I said, no problem. But what do I have? God said, you, too, you have started with it. That was how I started. I started the, the teachings from the man of God. That was how I started, you know, 
before I was, you know, I was caught up in drinking, I was caught up in smoking, I was caught up in anything evil. And I was never inspired. But when I drew close to God, I started working with him. I would just wake up in the middle of the night and I would start writing. I would start, I would start seeing revelations, I would start writing, I would start writing. That was how I started. I started writing to the glory of God. I started writing. I started composing songs. You know, with this my my bad voice, you know, we, people that, that usually drink, we usually smoke, you know, we don't have anything bad good. Voice. How bad voice? I was like, how can I start this thing? How can I, how will I be able to do this? Because mm -hmm. I was having the courage. God started pushing me on. I started writing. I started composing songs. You know, along the way, you know, evangelists will come to, you come to the prison and they, they will just keep on encouraging me. So I joined the choir and the church. That was how the journey started mm. with God. God has been faithful. I started the journey. I started the journey, and it was, it was, it was a very hard journey. But I thank God that God was with me in the journey. Yes, that was. God told me to start a class in this in the prison. Then, what do I know? That I'm going to teach these people. God told me. He reminded me. He said, "Start with what you have. Start with what you have in your hands." Mm. I started. You know, I, I started a class called the School of Life. The vision to be a shining light unto others. It is called the school of life. The vision to be a shining light unto others. Sorry, somebody were asking, were you a Christian before you came to prison? No, I was not a Christian. You was I, I was born in the Muslim home. My dad is even an allergy before he passed away while I was in the wow. prison. Wow. Wow. So, so God taught his life in the prison and he became a Christian. And you know, this is not an ordinary testimony. It is what is called total revival. God has really done something exceptional in this man's life. Please complete your testimony and then so, how you gave your life to Christ, you know, so, uh, what happened. So, you know, now back to my case, sir. My case is, is a courtism case. Conspiracy to commit murder and murder. It was a dead case. This to be condemned for this case. You know, I add on to the word of God. Mm. Which says that whoever the Son of Man says free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. I add on to his word that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm. I add on to his word. I add on to his word and I was I was still doing his work. You know, I was I was I was I was there's like something that that is like I was serving. So I was serving in the prison. I was serving with every of my heart. I was serving. Mm -hmm. You know, people serve for them to be recognized. Nice. People serve for them to be paid. Mm -hmm. People serve for so many reasons. But I know my service for God is just, it's just a, from, from a pure heart because of what God has done for me. Mm -hmm. I had a personal encounter with God. So many people say that, but this, you are not, they are, they are not paying you anything. They are not giving you anything. But I will, I will just, I will serve him diligently. I add on to the word which says he is the rewarder of them that diligently, that diligently seeking. seeking. I was working for God. Now, uh, before, because I know you must have encountered, there must be some, some sort of encounter you had that made you to abandon that old religion and yes, come sir. to Christ. What really happened there? Because I know that might help some people there. What is it that really happened to you? You know, it's very important that we know. What really happened to me was, you know, when it comes to Every sin I was, I, I was involved in every sin. If I start mentioning the sin, I've, 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 when it comes to drugs, when it comes to, when it's, when it comes to, you know, murder cases, when it comes to a lot of things that I've done, I was involved in all these kind of things. But you know, there was something I was, I was always trying to do. Whenever I do something, my conscience would prick me that what I've done is wrong, is, mm. is wrong. Mm. And every time I try to to stop these things, I, 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 I never, as in. I can't stop. Every time I try to stop this thing that I was doing, I can never ever stop. I, and the devil was telling me that just move along. You can't, you can't, you are in prison. Enjoy yourself. Flex on with your life. You can't. What, what is it? When you get out of the prison, you would you will at, at least, but for now that you are in prison, enjoy, just flex on. And you know, in sin, we can't sin as a usual dose. Mm. We live in sin. We enjoy sin. We, we think it's a normal act in sin. When we live in sin and i tried to stop all those things you know i was i was trying to make researches to stop these things i was trying to work on myself to stop it but i could not not until that personal encounter with christ not until that personal encounter and i gave him if you can that i will give my, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will i will completely serve you that was so, a turning point sir so that is a, what i'm why why do i ask that question again 
there must be an encounter genuine encounter for you to be able to say that you are born again i see some people saying sometimes oh, i can see that man it don't really change really i'm not so sure that that man has really changed what is change change is constant it's a, it's a gradual process mm -hmm. when you become a born again then you start to build they start the angels will help you holy spirit will help you, you can't do it alone when i got out of prison as a drug dealer i does not i didn't just become evangelist christian chukuka mm -hmm. there was a, the, the bible say you will stay in the city mm -hmm. until power is endued oh, from on high yes, yes. when that power come upon you then you begin to do exploit the tongue of fire need to hit your head so please don't expect people that come out from prison to suddenly become like you or maybe you judge them based on their look or whatever. If you do that, you are on your own because you will get it all wrong. This young man, you see the religion he came out from. We have to say the Nikoi over and over again, program upon program. One day he decided that no, this thing this man is saying is true. Let us get, let me get try Jesus Christ. And he tried, he never go back. Today he has his business in Nikoi that will help him to start small things, which we are going to ask for your support today to support him so that he can be able to move on and do something better. He's do, selling palm shoes, he's uh, doing popcorn, he's doing indomie, right? Yes, indomie yes. food. He's trying to do everything. If he has not changed, trust me, he will go back to courtism. He will continue to do whatever they are doing in courtism. My calling has also been to help those youths in courtist in courtism it's part of my calling because i have the grace to speak to them with my past experience and they will listen this person is a changed person so if you think he hasn't changed then you need to pray for him more you know why i'm saying this i read one comment here on youtube somebody said are you sure he has changed I, i'm not going to tell you whether he changed or not i know that he has found jesus christ and then he's on the process he's working on his damascus now so i don't know what else we should do than this the true Christianity is to see people testifying because the Bible says in Revelation 12, 10 and 11, it said that we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. We love not our life unto death. He loved not his life unto death. That's why he traveled all the way from Ikorodu to come down here today to share his testimony. And on Tuesday, you're going to see two biological brothers, the same mother, the same father, and their parents are priests ministers of God, they end up in Ubiaja prison for five good years. When we go there to do program, the word of God came sharply, pierced them, the deliverance came. And when that deliverance come, it became Romans chapter 8 verse 1. He said, now therefore, there is no condemnation upon those that are in Christ Jesus. Those that walk according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. Do you see that? That word has to come that caused transformation. And that word hit this abudu in, in a great prison. He was transformed. I'm so glad for him. This is where I can bet my money. This is where I can invest my money because it's a transformed life. And I can assure that this one is one of our own. Whenever we have any big program here in Lagos, he's going to be part of it. His testimony will also help people. We have so many others, Joy or Joy, and others that have come out before that their testimony can help. So encourage this kind of people to remain in Christ. Okay, I don't know. I think you have something more to say. Go ahead, yeah. please. Yeah, there is something that I, that has cost me that I need to say. You know, when I was in the prison, I believe God made me to go through some process. Mm. I was not just. I believe I, I was just because I asked God for the reason why I was in prison. God, God made me to know that He's going to give me a mandate. He gave me a mandate to bring those out of because I was once in deep darkness. Mm. Mm. called out by his mercy and his grace mm. now my mandate is to bring those that i especially the youth especially the youth because this this arts of sin courtism and all those stuff has is really is as really it's, it's, it's our mission the society is really eating up and you know really. there is they they find joy they find pleasure in destroying in this, lives they, they find this pleasure in doing this you know there is no one to to just like to correct, to correct them. them, but God has given me the mandate to call those out of darkness and into His marvelous it. light. And you know, I I went through the process because I believe I did not go to the prison. I I called prison the school of life. Mm. I call it the school of life. Now in the prison, I went through this process because before a plant can become a plant, it has to 
come through the, the gang. Mm. The gang is a very dirty place. Yes. I was I was I was stumbled upon, I was betrayed, I was neglected, and thanks to the glory of God. I'm still growing, I'm in the process. I won't say I've I've not grown. Perfect person, no. But you know when I was in prison, you know, I, I know that one day I'll be out, but I was not in the area. I, I know I was believing that I, I was going to be condemned. Mm. But I told God, you know, I was I told God that God, I'm a dirty person. This is this is what God did, you know, I'm from the dead. But God picked me up. After picking me, cleansed me, he purified me. After purifying me, you know, I was I was still stubborn, I was still proving to be stubborn. But after purifying me, he now break me. You know, breaking someone that is that is stubborn, you it break me. After he broke me, then he now as in he melt me, then he now molded me to his own perfect product. Well. He molded me perfectly to his own perfect product. And this is this is something. Hmm. I, I always tell God that God, I, I don't know where I, where I'm going to to set me free, but this is it. I don't want to come out of prison and then go back to the prison. Because there's a there are a lot of people that People go back to the prison more than 40 times. They go and they come. I don't want to go back. I call myself your ambassador. I'm, I'm your vessel. I'm your shining light. I don't want to come back to the prison, take care of the prison, and then go back to the prison. And I don't want to come out of prison and then get killed outside there. A lot of people come out of prison and then they are killed outside. Mm, mm. I, then, the, the third thing, I don't want to come out of the prison and then go back to my vomit. That is what I usually tell God. Now, God, I'm not in a hurry to come out of this prison. I'm not in, God, I know that I cannot be in this prison and, and serve you and then still remain in this prison. You need to launch me out there to the world for your glory. Mm. So that I can, I can be a testimony. I can be your mandate. This is mm. me as I am, oh. as your vessel. Now, I said, be done with me until you are done with me. I don't know what you are. I don't know the process you are putting me through. But be done with me. Break me. Melt me. Melt me and remove me into your perfect and finished product. Then launch me out there for your own purpose. Launch me out there for your glory, mm -hmm. not for the glory of man, because the life that I live is not for myself. It's just it's just to the glory of God. So that is that is that is that is that is how God has called me. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel. And nothing more when you're done please take the glory i'm satisfied just to see you glorified take this stage lord have your way I'm just a vessel, Lord, and nothing more. When you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. My brothers and my sisters, see, I don't care what the world think about me or think about Biodu. Yeah? Do you know what I think? Who we are today. We used to be murderers. We used to be killers. We used to be destroyers. But we are changed in Christ Jesus. I was a brutal drug dealer. The cocaine that I was selling, I might not have taken a gun, bam, 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 to shoot somebody. I might not have taken a knife to, knock it, to, snap somebody, to stab somebody to death. But when you take a sniff of cocaine, or you inject cocaine in your body, you are a dead man walking. Your system is contaminated. It's a deadly virus. That cocaine is a substance, a deadly substance. So I was a murderer. Are you hearing me? So before you condemn anybody, please ask God, what is sin and what is not sin and who is a sinner are you hearing me it's a man who remains sinning is a sinner a man that sin and repent is no longer sinner but a righteous man the bible say confess your sin james 5 16 confess your sin one to another pray for one another for a faithful fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much how did you become a righteous you know because of your confession he is here testifying his confession. This man was born in sin, in iniquity, the mother conceived, in sin she bore him. And he came out of darkness in the prison, through the world that came out sharp, from who an unqualified like me. Only a testimony of what I've been through. 
and this man believed he can be a changed person. He changed. We need to applaud to Jesus for what Jesus is doing. We have over 74,000 prisoners in Nigeria alone. I can't remember the number in Ghana. I've been to 34 prisons in Ghana, 200 and something prisons in Nigeria, and then some prisons in Pretoria, South Africa. Do you know why I'm doing it? I'm doing it because of people like this. There are so many remnants in the prison that need to touch. Come on board. Let's do this work together. My brother, I know you might have gone through hell inside the prison. People will not understand. But let me introduce something to you. You see this book here? See this book? Wilderness Experience and the Lessons in the Prison. Wilderness Experience Part and Lessons in the, the Prison. Of yes. And then it says... Pathway to the Testimony of Greatness. Pathway to the Testimony of Greatness. This book was written by this man. If he would have remained where he was before, he wouldn't write this book. It's only money holding him from publishing it. And very soon, this book will be everywhere. Please, when he's done with it, we put a soft copy as well. You can go and download and read. That is an encounter. If you, if you haven't encountered Jesus Christ, you won't go this far. You won't. And there are so many... Please, introduce some of your material. Please, yeah. if you introduce your material. I, I also, to the glory of God, because, you know, people believe that it's only drugs that gives inspiration, you know? Mm -hmm. We are engaged in drugs, we are engaged in sins, we are engaged in worldly pleasures. Mm -hmm. And we think that is, that is where the pleasure lies. We, we think that is where the enjoyment lies. But we, not until you come close to Christ, not until you have this encounter, as in you, you get close to Him, then you know the joy. You know what you are missing in Christ. You know, you, you know I, I find fulfillment in Christ. Yes. If you don't have Christ, you can never be fulfilled in life at all. You know, before I was, I was thinking of my freedom. I was thinking of, of, of how do I start? How do I start a family? How do I, how do I start? How do I start a lot of things? Bombarded my head. But look at what God did. He started giving me things. He started revealing much of Himself to me. Now this is, this is my quotes, personal quotes in the wilderness. Hmm. Personal quotes in the wilderness. These are my personal quotes in the gonna wilderness. Put this on a book as well. Is it going to come on a book or just like this? No, I have not done that. You know, I've not been able to. Yeah, wait, the, please uh, let me say something before we continue here. This young man needs your assistance. He needs to put all this. He has so many things, uh, many articles he put down that he want to put in a book. He needs to bring this inside. Like, these quotes are not ordinary quotes. They are very powerful quotes that he put here. So many of them. So and many of them. Quotes. Uh, personal quotes in the wilderness is called this one, quotes. and this one they call it alphabetical quotes in the wilderness. These are the experience they have in encounter quotes. Yes, right, yeah? right. And this one is called what? My, My dream. dream. No matter your state or color, your state or color, really the change starts now. These are the things that this guy, other ones, what was the other ones there? This one's a quote, and those are my books also. The second book is The Lost for Freedom, L-U-S-T, The Lost for Freedom. The second book is coming as it's Lost, Lost for Freedom. L-U-S-T, The L -U -S -T, Lost for Freedom. Yeah, L-U-S-T, Lost for Freedom. That's the second book. And the first one, I love this one so much. Wilderness Experience and Lessons in the in part Praise with Earth, part with, part with Testimony of, um, greatness. of Greatness. Then, then one other thing I want to say here, Abiodu, is this. You are living in a very deadly zone. Yes, Ikorudu is brutal when it comes to courtism. Then this place I am living here, Ebe, is another brutal place for courtism. You make sure you make you take that since you were their leader in the courtism before, make sure you continue to encounter those boys. Yeah, that's your assignment. Tell us more. Just if you tell you us know, more about that. Know, well, How far you have also gone in that, we need to know. You know, I I never knew that I was going to be in that vicinity. But you know, I believe God has a he has he has plans for man. You don't just go on a God has a He has given us a purpose, He has given us a mission, mm -hmm. and everything that He has given us, He always makes provisions for it. Yes. God is a God of perfection. He doesn't work and then you his works are perfect. His works he doesn't work. He, he said his way, whatever he has started in, in our life, he will surely complete. complete it. You know, I was in that zone, but you know, I was sometimes the fear would be like for me to relate, but you know, there is something in me. God has, I'm a light to the world. And there's no way that I would be that I won't be able to talk about the light. That's you it. know, there's no way that light that the light would be, and then the, 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 the darkness would be able to, to comprehend yeah, it. Stop so even in the little thing that I'm doing, I try to share 
talk to people. This is what I've been through. You know, this is this is it. This is my life. This is what I. This is where I find myself evolving. Thank God for salvation. I even share my. I, I share my quotes. I share my experience with them. I share most of my right talk with them. Most people that I, that I can't, that, as in that I can't. Most places that I, that I can't hear through directly. You know, my my right talk go for me. And glory be to God. You know, I've been able to. I've been out for for more than a year, and I've been working for God. Because I have a mandate, and mm. that mandate, I cannot derive from the mandate. Mm. I had a personal encounter. This is not someone just speaking, and then this is not, this is my encounter with Christ. So I take it very seriously. I'm called to serve, and my service is with the fear of God. So that's why I just encourage them, I encourage the youth wherever I find myself. This thing, they find joy in this, but and, and, to God and let Christ. me say this uh, he was not released because he was a good guy. I hope you understand me. Sorry, sir. I want to share something about my, my release. Mm. Sorry, sorry for this. Go sorry, ahead, sir. You know, I was, I was going to cost that day. Yes. I was, it was on, on May 13th. That was in the, that was last year. That mm. was last year. You know, I was prepared to go on a condemn. You know, people were saying this is it, but I shared all, all that I had. I was like, God, let your will be done. That means he had decided to go into death row let and your die. Will. Let He's your not will. expecting to come out. Let yeah. your will just be done. Until you had, I, even if I go to the death row, one day, I know I'm coming out, but until you are done with me in this process, I don't mm. want to come out. Mm. I'm not in a hurry to come out, but until you are done molding me, then release me to the world. Then I went to the court that day, you know, the, the judge just, she looked and said, she said this, this I hereby, you know, there are many, now let me say something. There are many witnesses. <laughs> I hereby your heart wept. <laughs> witnesses were against, sir. Witnesses were against us. Mm. You had witnesses. We had conventional statements, sir. Conventional statements signed by me that I did it under duress, mm, sir. Mm. When when as when, when we were being tortured, I had no other other you option. Just have to sign I had to sign. I had to sign that I'm the one who did it. Now, conventional statements signed by me that I that I did it, mm. and all these are placed. We had witnesses. We had we had I we had you know there's something called IPO. You know, mm. I had like I had like something there is something called um evidence c evidence g i had like almost k or l mm. all but, evidence but points not some lawyers, you understand. I don't understand sir, those all schools. evidence points that one me, is beyond me as in that uh, you are going down for this you know when they are opened up a personal lawyer a personal lawyer is telling you that you are going down for it you know i i there's I, no hope there's no, there's no hope. hope there's no hope that we are going down for it i mean do you this understand what says, his own lawyer said there's no hope there's no hope for so this ahead, and what but happened? now the judge the judge the judge said and she has already accepted those things because you know the, the lawyers will say the, the prosecutor will say this is it. But the judge has already has accepted all those evidences. It was it was, it was against us. Mm. Now the judge just said, I hereby find you not guilty of conspiracy no. to commit murder. I hereby find you not guilty of courtism. I hereby find you not guilty of courtism. Not guilty of murder. Even you are, though, you are this, you even are it is, but God turned it around. This charge of the of all the are you hearing me i don't know if you are hearing what he's saying please whoever that is listening to me please there is no sin bigger than the other one every sin is sin and if god can forgive me if god can forgive apostle paul and if god can forgive all these brutal criminals everywhere that are coming out from prisons i am telling you if god can forgive abiodu god can forgive you just only come the way you are he said, come, oh wretched sinner you are. Come the way you are. I, I will take that your heavy laden and I will give you light yoke. He has a light burden for you, not heavy one. He will take the heavy one. Follow him. Walk with him and he will make your ways perfect. And when you start preaching gospel, your feet will be beautiful. Because he said that beautiful are those are the feet of those that preach gospel. I'm telling you, you have not called him. He called you and chose you and ordained you to go and bear fruit that your fruit remain you must remain in that field if this man come out of this field he's drawing death sentence upon him that's what i was telling joy before joy might think i was just i said joy if you ever disappoint god you made a covenant with god in the prison you know Biaja, when you came out from prison he said lord i will serve even when there's food or when there's no food i said are you sure of what you're saying he said yes that is sure and that's that settles it i made that covenant as well and i'm standing on it 
The only thing that will take me out of that covenant is if you behead me. If I'm dead, then it's over. But as long as I am alive and I'm existing, I will remain in the field. I don't care whether I am poor or rich. I will serve God all days of my life. I will rather, I will rather be drowned with stone in the sea than to forsake this Jesus Christ. He has done it for him. One more question I want to ask you is this. You see, you have a terrible toilet in Ikoi prison, you remember? Yes, sir. That toilet where the sheets are flowing on the ground everywhere smelling. They called me up to come and repair it and everything. How did you guys manage to be using that toilet when we come to church to do program every day everywhere is smelling the condition in that prison how are you guys coping with that condition for years after year year after year how do you guys cope yes uh, sir you know i would i would just say it's just been it's been called you know when it comes oh. to the when it comes to you know the toilet is at the back of the church at the back and, of the church the smelling the church, you know, when when people come and then the visit us and then we still but we still worship God, but it's not been easy it's not been it's easy. It's not been easy. It's not, even not for the support of you, you donate items, you donate things to us. I, I, how would we have been able the to... The reason why I want to start to bring everybody that come out from prison here for interview is because I want you to be aware. Hold your children properly. Stop letting your children go anyhow. They need iPhone 10, you buy iPhone 10. They need iPhone 20, you buy iPhone 20. They need iPhone 30, you buy one day day that you need a Bentley car. And if you cannot buy, she will, he will take knife and stab you. Say that he hates you he hates because he did not buy bent liquor. Whatever you build might be the downfall of your uplift tomorrow. Build your children in a way of the Lord so that when they go, they will not depart. Teach them how to pray. Teach your children humility. Teach them L-O-V-E, love. And tell them who is the master of all these things. His name is J-E-S-U-S, Jesus Christ. There's no other foundation can any man lay except that which is laid, which is Jesus. If your children don't know Jesus Christ, they are in crisis. I've made my mistake. I've made my mistake. I've shared my mistake with you. I'm a father of seven children from three different women. That is total messed up. It is total messed up committed all sort of evil because of drug money. But today, he has wiped away all those things. And I am here as a transformer. I want to help you. If you have a youth group in a church and all that, invite me. I will bring this, my guys, and we come and testify what God has done. And play some videos that will make them to run away from crime. I was in Abu prison, 150-something courtists came out and gave their life to Christ. It was in joke. Orca in Anambra is filled with courtism. Delta State, River State, everywhere filled with courtism. Lego State filled with courtism. That P.A. Ogun State. Our youth has diverted where they are seeking for power. Forgotten that the real power lies with Jesus Christ. Parents, tell your children about Jesus. Once they know Jesus, they will never run away from it again. Tell them about Jesus. You hear his background. He came out from a Muslim background. He said it here. Yeah? He did not know his left and right, but now he has found Jesus Christ and his life changed. He's now using his book, his testimony, his quotes in the way that is to transform the youth in Ikorodu. This is what we are seeking for. This is why this foundation is found. I did not create this foundation to amass wealth. I did not create this foundation to make money. I created this foundation to be able to help the lost life, the broken ribs. People that their spinal cord are broken, that are flat on the ground. We want to help them to lift them up again. That's the purpose of it. And this is one of them. I am so proud to say that I build this a changed person. If you think he has not changed, like somebody who wrote on YouTube here, yeah, he's not sure if this man has changed. That's your business. And I tell you what, when you're pointing one finger to someone, three are pointing at you, when one is pointing somebody you don't know, before you go and to remove love in someone's eye, remove the one in your own eyes. Every of the boys that are in the prison, I can die for them. Because I know in the prison there, 70-something percent are on a waiting trial, which means they are innocent. You can't condemn them until they are sentenced, right? So what we have in Nigerian prison, 75% minimum are innocent. In the Koi prison where he came from, last time I visited was 3,900 and something prisoners. And in that 3,900 and something, only 20% or 15% have been to court. So almost 80% are on a waiting trial. You cannot call them criminals. And some of them are in the prison for 10 years before they go to court. Some are 8 years. You didn't, what's the name of the guy I just released last week? This week? Yeah, Tunde. Tunde. How long were he here? Were he in the prison? He was in the prison for 8 years. 8 years. I'm bringing him here next week. 
eight, eight years, Tunde has not been in court. I've spoken to him now. We talk. He's coming here next week to speak to you. I'm going to start bringing you reality in Nigerian prisons. I'm going to begin to bring you so you know where I have spent my last eight years in Nigeria. Where I've spent over 100 and something million naira. You see why I'm spending the money. I'm spending it in other life for, to see life transformed. Not that I cannot be able to go back to Europe and go and live my life and have a comfortable home. No, I want to die for this once. This is where my calling is. This is where we're going to end tonight.